proper fractions represent parts of a whole. For example, here I'm representing one whole as three equal parts. We call each of these equal parts one third. For example, one third plus one third would be as though I shade in one third and then another third, and in total I've shaded in two thirds, two parts out of the three parts making up the whole. Similarly, if I did one third plus one third plus one third, that would be like shading in all three thirds. In total, I've shaded in three out of three, which is also one whole, or one. In both cases, we should notice that when we add the fractions, we add the numerators, but not the denominators. Remember, numerator is the top number, and denominator is the bottom number of a fraction. You might end up with an improper fraction as an answer. This is just a fraction where the numerator is larger than the denominator. You might have heard it being called a top-heavy fraction. Here, we want to add one quarter, three quarters, and two quarters. Going on from uh, what we always said before, this will give us six quarters. And we can visualize it like this. One quarter plus three quarters. So I'm shading in what I'm adding. So one quarter plus three quarters has given me one whole, but I've still got two more quarters to add. And if I do this, I can see that I've got one whole circle and then half a circle. So the answer is one and a half. To calculate this, we can just say that six over four can be written as one and a half because four goes into six once with remainder two. So we write it as one and two over four. Two over four will then simplify to one over two. Finally, you might need to simplify your answer. Here we have two tenths plus three tenths, which is obviously going to be five tenths. So here we go, we have two out of 10 plus three out of 10. I've got this whole cut into 10 parts. I'm shading in two parts for the two tenths and then three tenths. In total, we should notice that we've shaded in half of the whole, exactly half. So the answer needs to be a half. But when we work it out, it's five over 10. We then need to simplify by dividing the numerator and denominator by the common factor of five. This will give me an answer of one over two or one half. Here are some questions for you to try. Please pause the video now and have a go at them. And when you're ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers. Here are the answers. In the questions we've seen so far, the denominators have been the same, but usually the denominators are different. When the denominators are different, we need to use equivalent fractions to make them the same. For example, if we wanted to add one half and one quarter, we could use a picture. So we could imagine if I have half a pizza or half of a whole and a quarter of a whole, you can probably notice that that needs to be three out of four, three pieces out of four. But the way we can really do it is by looking at one half as two quarters and then adding up a quarter at a time. So what I'm going to do is write everything over the common denominator of four. To change the two into four, I've multiplied it by two. So I need to times the top by two as well. This gives me one times two is two over two times two is four, giving me the equivalent fraction two over four. It's equivalent because two over four will simplify to one over two. I can now add as I have before by adding the numerators. Two plus one is three over four, giving me three quarters. Similarly, here I have four fifths plus three over 10. This will be a little bit trickier to draw out. So here, the lowest common multiple of five and 10 is just 10. So to get 10, I multiply the five by two, and therefore I need to multiply the top or the numerator by two as well to keep the fraction the same. So I have eight over 10 plus three over 10, giving me an answer of 11 over 10. Now 10 goes into 11 once with remainder one, 
So the final answer is 1 and 1 tenth as a mixed number. If I wanted to do 3 quarters plus 5 eighths, again, the lowest common multiple of 4 and 8 is just 8. So we multiply 4 by 2 and 3 by 2 for the first fraction, giving me 6 eighths. 6 eighths plus 5 eighths. This is obviously going to be 11 eighths. 8 goes into 11 once with remainder 3. So the final answer is 1 and 3 eighths. Here, it's a little bit different because we might need to change both of the numbers on the denominators. We look at the lowest common multiple of 5 and 4. And if we look at the times tables, we should notice that that is going to be 20. So I need to multiply 5 by 4 to get 20. So I multiply numerator and denominator of the first fraction by 4. And the second fraction, I would need to multiply numerator and denominator by 5, giving me 15 twentieths. So my final answer is 4 twentieths plus, plus 15 twentieths, which is 19 twentieths. And this cannot be simplified. 1, one half plus 3 sevenths. I notice again that the lowest common multiple of 2 and 7 is 14. So that's what I'm going to use as my denominator. I multiply 2 by 7 and the 1 on the top of the fraction by 7. 7 by 2 and 3 by 2. I get 7 plus 6, which is going to be 13 over 14 as my answer. Here, I can see that the lowest common multiple of 5 and 7 is going to be 35. And I have a subtract. The only difference is that I take away the denominators now rather than adding them. So my lowest common multiple of 5 and 7 is 35, and I get that by timesing 5 by 7. So I have 28 over 35, take away 15 over 35. On the top, I need to do 28 to take away 15, so I'm just going to work that out. That gives me 13. So I have 13 out of 35 as my final answer. Here are some questions for you to try. Please pause the video now and have a go at them. And when you're ready for the answers, press play. Here are the answers.